everyday witches emerge from the shadows of secrecy. Broom closets are flinging open and witches are taking flight. Whether you are hiding in your cozy closet or flying with pride, stay for a spell as witch casting with Theodora Pendragon and her guests share magical moments, stir the cauldron and debunk misinformation and misconceptions about paganism, witches and our wonderful world of magic. Hello everyone. Today is a special episode because I'm collaborating with my friend Aridia, my co-host, who has her own podcast called Queer Casting. So this is a joint episode where we will both be airing this episode on each of our podcasts. I am so happy to be here and I am so thankful for Theodora Pendragon, because she has inspired me to start my own podcast, which is going to be a lot like this one. My name is Aridia. That's a magical name that was given to me by my spirit guide or my angel. And I have been on witch casting previous to this episode, where I shared my experiences as a military witch. I'm also a transgender woman. And so in queer casting, I want to discuss coming out of the closet, the rainbow closet, as a trans woman, especially in these times. But my friend Theodora, you know something about coming out of closets. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the work you've done in that area? Well, I deal with two different kinds of closets. As a therapist, I help people with their rainbow closet. And as a witch, I help people with their broom closet. And you know, there is another closet. Which is what? It's the closet where we keep our skeletons. Do you have skeletons? I'm finding out that I do. (laughs) (laughs) Recently, I've had some experiences about suppressed fears and how important it is that we face our phobias and our fears. I was told by a wise counselor that unless that if you are looking for healing, the place to start is by facing your fears honestly and with integrity. And you know, one thing I want to say, Theodora, I know the witch casting audience knows this, but the queer casting audience will not know this yet. And that is you wrote this fascinating book called Out of the Broom Closet. And what I thought was great is when I first met Theodora, it was, it was in the witch venue because she had found out about some of my previous experiences in the military as a, as a witch. And yet, when I began to explain to her my journey coming out also of the rainbow closet, she was very excited about that. And I thought, well, this is really neat that I have a friend that can appreciate the journey because as a witch, she can appreciate that, that journey. but who could also appreciate the other one, because not everybody shares that sentiment. And I've lived with a lot of fear. I mean, you know, when you're more relaxed about telling people that you're a witch than you are that you're (laughs) transgender or part of the LGBTQ community, you know, right now in America, I think being a witch is more popular than LGBTQ+. What do you think? I'd have to agree with you. I know. I mean, 20 years ago, being a witch was um, scary in certain places. Now, being LGBTQ plus suddenly has gotten rather scary in more than one place. Don't you believe? Is that what you hear from your clients? I hear from them. Tell me what your fears are. What my fears are? Hmm. Well... I think all of us that have been around a minute (laughs) or two fear getting older. We may not be able to do the things that we're used to doing. Or, of course, there's lots of 
lots of things about getting older that cause us to, I don't know, be more cautious. And maybe that's not a bad thing, especially in my case, it's probably a good thing. But still, you know, you fear that kind of thing. Um, you fear dementia maybe coming on, or you fear not being able to um, be as adventurous and bold and loud and explosive as, <laughs> as I have been in the past. What do you fear? As I get older, I fear much less because our fears are in our head. And usually our worst fears aren't as bad as what we anticipate the outcome will be. Would you agree with that? Oh, 100%. 100%. You're right. Because, you know, I used to fear, well, I used to fear being a witch. And I kept that suppressed for a very long time. And of course, then when I came out, I sort of came out <laughs> completely, <laughs> very loud, very Aries the way I came out. And uh, <laughs> did you, <laughs> okay, did you just say very Aries? Yeah, very Aries, you know. <laughs> well, okay, so that's what we have in common is that I'm also an Aries and we're just full of fire. Exactly. It's like. Have you ever been to the Burning Man? I was the Burning Man. <laughs> so I you know, did that. It worked out. Coming out, because you know, being transgender, I was transgender when I was a kid, but there wasn't a word for it. Half of the people thought I was a girl and half the people thought I was a boy. I mean, I did not even know that. That When I think I was in my 20s before I found out there was something called a transvestite which uh, was a catch-all phrase for anything odd in a dress. <laughs> 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 right? It's like, oh, I don't know what that is, so we'll just put it in this bin over here, and maybe it'll quit making noise. It was very frightening when about 15 years ago, I started going out. I mean, I, did, I, did, I would go out in New Orleans in my 20s, just to raise hell, but it's New Orleans, New Orleans, baby. I mean, New Orleans, you're in the French Quarter. You're going to have to do something really, you're going to do something a lot crazier than just wearing a red dress and heels to get attention. Okay. <laughs> you know, so that was a safe venue to cross dress in back in my 20s. But when I really started becoming a trans woman and spending a lot of time being me, in Westport, Kansas City, and you know, Missy B's and Hamburger Mary's, and just kind of running that that route. That was very frightening because you know, going to a safe place, you know, people were yelling at you or throwing beer bottles at you, or you know, and threatening you, and and you had to be really careful. But yet here I am, and now I am full time all the time. Have been for the third. I mean, I transitioned thirteen years ago. So what I mean, I agree. I'm a lot. I have a lot more courage than I think I do. Does that make sense? <laughs> what about you? What what fears have you outgrown? I used to worry about what other people think. That's an awful fear. So I'm glad I'm over that. Right. I'm over it mostly. <laughs> we can't please everybody. No. Because when you please everybody else, you're not pleasing yourself. Right. Right. And you're also letting them tell you, they are telling you, you have to be this or do that to please me. And you're agreeing by doing it. So you're not being you. No, you're being a puppet. Right. And it's been, you know, the transgender thing has been hard. No, no, witchcraft was hard. Don't get me wrong. You know, my family's is Catholics, conservatives, and uh, Messianic Jews, and a couple Protestants. No one in my family supported me being a witch. It was ugly. It was really ugly. It got all but disinherited by my father. So that was rough. But we got through that. But being transgender... Again, we got through it, but it has been rough. And the family's still not a big fan. <laughs> they love me. They love the sinner, but they don't love the sin. Aridia, you're an easy person to love. When people know you, it's so easy to love you. 
Oh, well, thank you. You're awesome. You're one of my heroes. And you're the one that gave me this idea of doing a a podcast about queer casting. Because what you're doing, I mean, what you did for me, and I'm just one story in your book. And if you guys haven't gotten the book, get the book. It's really good. I don't care if you're straight, gay, Christian, witch, whatever. It's a wonderful book because it will show you the diversity of those whom people call witches. Fascinating people with fascinating lives that are just just interesting to see how many different fabrics and threads are woven together into this thing called humanity. And it's very sacred and we should appreciate and love each and every thread because it's special. But you know, you helped me because my witchcraft story started like with the big bang. And then <laughs> <laughs> and then just wandered off in the wilderness and died of loneliness. <laughs> It's kind of like the the roadkill witch. It's like, whatever happened to Dawn? You know, it's like, and uh, so it was very therapeutic for me to say, hey, after all these years, guess what? I'm still here. Hi. You know what I mean? And you gave me a chance to, to tell that story. And, you know, as a therapist, you're not my patient, you're my friend, but as a therapist and I have patients and they're telling me their difficulties. I have to put myself in their shoes. I'm a straight woman. I like men. I mean, that didn't come up really right. (laughs) I liked it. (laughs) So I have to imagine what it's like to be you. Can you do it? (laughs) I think that'd be a hard one to imagine. That has to come from empathy. Yes. Yes. Not everybody has that kind of empathy. I think that's something that is either intuitive or you learn empathy. Some people never have empathy. They don't. They don't. There's a lot of people, I think, in society that that have lost it. They've lost empathy. You know, we used to, as a society, talk about virtues. You know, this is not scruples. Virtues like love, patience, kindness, you know, things that would grow up from the soul that would make you a big soul and very loving toward other people. And we see now, I see a lot. I work with the public. Um, Even though I'm retired, I got a little fun job on the side just to build my chicken coop and pay for my pot. (laughs) 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 But yeah, I work with the public and you just see impatience and intolerance and they're just they're like they're they're small little souls that can't suffer the slightest inconvenience as opposed to large souls that have lots of room for someone to come and feel safe in their presence. Do you know what I'm trying to say? I do. Okay. And see empathy is one of those things that you hardly even hear about you hardly even hear it discussed. And yet it's so important to be able to empathize. You know, I spent seven years with the Northern Cheyenne as a school teacher. And, you know, I'm not native. I'm a Viking. I'm a Jewish Viking. (laughs) And uh, so that's not my culture. But wow, do I love and appreciate that culture. And I have a lot of empathy because they go through struggles. And everybody thinks everybody has it good in America. That's not a well-researched assumption. You know, when you walk with the Northern Cheyenne, they have resource challenges and, other, and social challenges that are just off the scale. And yet, you know, they're making it through. But I have great empathy for them. My poor kids, you know, they tough and smart and artistic and amazing. They deal with situations that other demographics couldn't even imagine. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, And it made me a better teacher because I had lots of empathy for these kids and I just loved them. I bet you were a fun teacher. I was. I was. I was telling this guy today, it was like, move, 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 move. You know, kids like to move. Kids got to move. So I, there was always lots to do in the classroom and they could go over here. They could go over there. They could go this way. They could go that way. There's a lot of freedom, but a lot of structure and they learned a lot. So, but empathy is important. And 
that kind of takes me to why I want to do queer casting, the podcast. You in this venue have given alternative spirituality people a platform to tell their story. Well, right now in the media, and I'd be curious to see if you as a straight woman agree, right now in the media, okay, I'm not a news person. I spend two minutes a day. I just hit news farming sites and read the headlines. And if something catches my interest, I might do a couple paragraphs. I don't watch the news. I don't listen to the news. So I'm not that person with the news going on 24-7, 365. However, two minutes a day, like three or four days ago, there were seven of the top 25 stories in the country were all about LGBTQ plus people. None of them favorable. There's 365 laws right now across the United States against taking away LGBTQ rights. Right now. I mean, the Montana, there's a that representative from the state of Montana, where I just moved from. You know, there's a transgender woman from Missoula who has been censored by the House. She can't talk in America. Because she said if you take if you cut off gender affirming care to uh, teenagers, you'll have blood on your hands. Well, you will. I did a research from my last school district and the, because, you know, teen suicide in our country is a big issue. And the ones that are most likely to attempt it are LGBT, LGBTQ plus kids and most likely to succeed, same population group, by considerable numbers. So what the representative Zephyr was trying to say is you cut off this gender affirming care. Some of those kids are going to make really bad choices. For this, she censored. Well, oddly enough, I mean, the hypocrisy is if you have been pro-choice in this country for the last 30 years and you make that known, you have been told that, you know, you're a murderer and a baby killer and, you know, lots of other harsh language has been used. That's okay. I guess it's okay for one side to use that kind of language, but for this one to say that got her censored. But that is to me is just indicative. There's this whole tidal wave right now of trying to isolate, segregate, and discriminate against LGBTQ plus people. Do you agree? I agree. Okay. I have four children and two of them are transgender and they're 20 years old and uh, they're scared. They're getting it. And I'm hearing a lot. As a matter of fact, I literally, I'm just doing my job. (laughs) And I had a trans woman find, now I live in a very, I live on the Lake of the Ozarks. So I'm in a very conservative part of the country as a very not conservative person. (laughs) So why did you choose to live there? Oh, that's a great question. I think because the gods, they have a sense of humor. Um, (laughs) (laughs) I seem, I mean, The reason I say that is totally unintentionally, I came out of the broom closet right in the middle of the culture war over witchcraft. I was just at ground zero. I just showed up, said hello, and accidentally lit a fuse that just, you know, that got me in Wikipedia. But, (laughs) (laughs) and then, you know, I, again, I was transgender as a kid. I didn't even know what it was. And then, you know, doing you know, drag in my 20s. And I've been doing this all my life. This is not like something I did, you know, two weeks ago. I thought, oh, I'll just, you know, do that. I'm not pissing anybody off. So I'm going to go do this. So I've been doing this forever. And then I come out, you know, I, you know, 13 years ago, full time, live just 100%. And now I'm once again, right at the ground zero of the culture war. It's like, didn't you learn your lesson the last time and then I show up right in the middle of this whole LGBTQ plus conservative backlash stuff but I thought well I'm gonna learn from Theodora in other words I'm not gonna get negative because I want to but I won't I really want to (laughs) but I can't because it's not the right way you got to stay in love you got to stay in light and you know I have to show love to all of us everybody not just the ones I like (laughs) So really what you're saying is that this has been a lifelong struggle for you. Right. And now it's become a big thing in the nation. So learning from you, I thought, 
I should start a podcast where LGBTQ plus people can tell their story. Because we have let Alex Jones and Tucker Carlson and Rush Limbaugh and politicians tell America who we are. You know, we've let all these conservative Bill O'Reilly, the spin starts here, guys. We've just sat quietly trying to live our lives and doing our thing. And now there's this narrative out there about who LGBT, who we are, LGBTQ+. I wish we could have one word, who rainbow people are. <laughs> rainbow alphabet. Yeah, there you go. Who us alphabets are. But the point simply is it's time for us to have our own, to tell our story, just like you're allowing witches to tell their story to the world and say, hey, here's who we are. We're artisans. We're moms. We're fathers. We're this. We're that. We're the others. We're business owners. And uh, we need to have a, a venue. And I know there's lots going on, but there's room for this platform. So people can feel safe to come on and just tell anyone who wishes to listen, hey, this is how I ended up over here. This is why I ended up over here. And I don't think America's hearing that story. On your podcast, will you be featuring guest speakers? Yes. Yes, I will. I'm going to find, I've already got quite a few in the queue, people that are interested in being on there, like. I've got a friend who she happens to be lesbian, but she works in our, in the Missouri. Um, she testifies often on behalf of our community and, and the Missouri legislature. She's agreed to be on. She very knowledgeable, very professional, wonderful individual to tell her own story and maybe to kind of give people an idea of, of, of the shenanigans going on politically that are taking away people's rights. So people like that, I want to have my, uh, my, my transgender kids on. I even want to have my uh, straight kids on and like my son who was raised by me. So this myth that if your mother is um, a trans woman, that it's going to mess you up, you know, your sexuality up really. David straight as an arrow has a wonderful wife and two children and he loves me and we have a great relationship. So what's the problem? (laughs) It's all fine. It's fine. So, I want that story to be told because there's a lot of myths out there that are not grounded in the science. They're not good psychology and they're not good public um, policy. We need to start talking because the people that are talking about us are not really informed as to who we really are. There's my little spiel. (laughs) But yes, I want to have guests on. I want it basically to be a podcast like yours. And I'm hoping that you can be on my podcast from time to time. And if you want, I'll be on your podcast from time to time. So we can kind of, they can be sister podcasts that are doing the same work for different disenfranchised communities. On your podcast, I can be Theodora the therapist. Theodora the the witchy therapist. Yeah. And now, boys and girls, we are going to rub the crystal ball and see if we can't find Theodora, the magical therapist. (laughs) How does that sound? That sounds terrific. (laughs) Great. So that's it. So tell me, just for funsies, what's your passions nowadays? What's Theodora about? Well, that's a broad question. Yeah, just kind of what's getting you up in the morning? What are your kind of personal goals? I start my day with a morning run. And a trip to the gym. Anything interesting happened at the gym? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, sometimes I slam my finger in the equipment, you know, and blood blood gushes everywhere. And I wipe it up and lift some more weights. (laughs) (laughs) And look at at the amazed crowd. that. (laughs) That's great. Anything else? In addition to my day job. Yeah. See, what I'm all about right now is gardening. And so I've grown all these plants from seed. And of course, here in Missouri, the weather has been just cold and hot and windy and nasty. And it just, it's been very uncooperative. But I've been fighting all that. I'm all into my gardening. I'm very passionate about that. And then my next 
big effort is I'm going to become a chicken farmer. And so I've been building a chicken coop and building a chicken pen. My chicks are supposed to be hatched in three days, which means after we get done here, I have to get really busy because uh, I'm at about the 20% solution. And I've only been working on it for three weeks. <laughs> are you saying you're going to be a mother hen? I'm going to be a mother hen. And I'm very excited about it. I'm either going to get three or four chicks. And of course, I'm really, really into it because my granddaughter is dying to come down and play with the chicks. So I don't think I will ever break even on the expenses of setting up this little chicken ranch. But um, when I see my granddaughter's face, it'll be worth it. So that's kind of what I'm, I'm all about. And queer casting and working my little job. Well, I'm working on witch casting with Theodore Pendragon and my little job, which is not always so little. <laughs> <laughs> right? I know. I just recently retired from my real careers and I, I don't miss them. So with that, I want to thank you so much for doing this episode with me. And I hope that your audience would support ours. And as our audience grows, that we would support yours. And it would just be because um, these are both two communities that are underserved and undervoiced and often misrepresented. So I thank you for helping me start. And let's see what happens. And some of my followers are among the queer community. So hopefully they will start following you as well. Thank you so much, Theodora. Thank you, Iridia. Until next time. Exactly. Somewhere over the rainbow. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for Witch Casting with Theodora Pendragon. Have a burning question or have a topic you'd love Theodora and her guests to discuss on the show? Contact her through Instagram at Theodora Pendragon. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next one. And help us spread the word by leaving us a rating and review and sharing it with your friends. See you next time and may your magic always shine. <laughs> <laughs>